You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another fun episode of Ask Drone You, where this show, I'm going to see just how far I can push Rob towards the cliff. <laughs> well, let's just say I'm hanging from the tree on the cliff as it is. <laughs> oh, we like to have fun here, Drone You. We do. And uh, we like to have real conversations, right? I Hey, I'm just going to say this really quick. I am a firm believer that conflict in conversation is truly important for the growth of the American mind. Everyone is seeing what decisiveness does. People just stop talking, stop communicating. Um, I think it's so healthy to be able to have arguments and where both parties understand that like the argument is not as important or as big as the relationship of being humans together as a whole. Yeah, and, and if we want to philosophize real quick, where that starts like between us and being like, if you listen to the last show, um, it starts with trust. That's like the, that's the foundation. If you trust each other, then you know you can have hard conversations and it's going to be okay. Even if you disagree, even if you disagree intensely, even if you disagree intensely about very important issues. Okay. Yeah, that trust is actually a really in interesting thing because when I lived in DC, people all the time left and right would talk to each other about issues all the time and talk about like, well, what about if this happened? Or what about if that happened? Like really good constructive conversation. Whereas now, anytime I go home, there's just like fighting and no one talks politics, period. It's just, yeah. and it makes me wonder, is that a factor of trust with the people in institutions as a whole? Yeah, I don't think anybody... We're not here to talk about that, luckily, though. So We're not, but it is kind of fun to talk about, but we'll do that off the air. We will. Uh, but today, we are going to be talking about what happens when you run into an illegal pilot who's a manned pilot. I'm not talking about... I'm not talking about those illegal drone pilots. I'm talking about some egregious Part 61 cowboys. What do you do? Do you get fired up? Do you get mad? call Fizdo, give him a little attitude. <laughs> I don't think you should do that. All right, let's hear the question, Rob. Brought to you by our friends at Fortress UAV. You just move your mouth and I'll talk. Ready? Go. Fortress UAV is one of those great companies that will absolutely clean your drone and give you the best service possible. If you're ready for the right... <laughs> <laughs> Clean your drone out This was really fun. Anyway, I'll just finish it with you. I'm just a little puppy here. I do what I'm told. I actually thought that was really entertaining. <laughs> if, if oh, there will be people that are mad at us for carrying on, but that's okay. You know what, though? Here's the thing. We love Fortress UAV, so whether you're pissed at us or not, they're a great company full of great people that actually give a crap about giving you good service. So there's that. Yeah, no, and they've actually really improved on their systems, and we've been able to experience this very recently. They have one of our drones now, and we just reached out to them and said, look, we just had a job come up that we would really love to have that drone for. We would need it by this day. She did not hesitate. She said, I'll make it happen. Zero. And so we'll, uh, I, we have full expectation that she will make that happen. Go to fortressuav.com forward slash drone you if you would like to check them out if you're having an issue with your drone um, we can we can uh, feel pretty comfortable having you very comfortable in fact having you give them a shot and then use the promo code drone you all caps d-r-o-n-e-u for 25 percent off their diagnostic fee and if you're a drone you member you can mention that to them they'll double check with us and then you'll get five percent off the actual cost to fix the drone as well. So they're doing some good things for drone you members and we appreciate that very much. FortressUAV.com slash drone you. Hey guys, Paul here from Arkansas, Airspeed 3D. Yes, uh, we plant and harvest the most rice in the United States and therefore we do a lot of photography uh, models of property out here. And one of my pilots was flying yesterday and was doing a pano at 400 feet and a crop duster flew right underneath him. Uh, I couldn't believe it when I saw the shot. He just got one picture of him 
uh, in frame, but it was definitely amazing. He had to be at li- maybe 100 to 150 feet. I've been flying for 30 years, and uh, and that's definitely what it looked like. So there is a problem, and not everyone is following the rules. Um, he wasn't spraying. He was going to a property to spray. What do you think we should do about that? Thank you, guys. Uh, I, I'm so looking forward to episode 1000. Y'all are by far the best at what you do. I uh, have another pilot that just went through your course, passed his 107, and did it in record time using the drone you. Take care and have a great day. Paul, thank you so much for the kind words and for the question. That is a really interesting question, I'll say. But I also have to say I had no idea about the rice thing in Arkansas. Did you? I did not know about that so, either. Tidbit. You never know what you're going to learn on Ask Drone You. I also didn't <laughs> know when he, we played the question the first time that he gave us a big shout out for part 107. So I appreciate that as well. Very much. But as we said in our last episode of Ask Drone You, just remember that part 107 isn't the only key performance indicator in becoming a successful drone pilot. You've got to take our other classes. And I really, really push everyone, everyone. I don't care if you've been flying for 30 years. I don't care if you're a surveyor and you already know how to map. Every single person I have ever met could use some form of the flight mastery class. And they will gain confidence and they will gain skill. Skill that you never never even thought that you could gain because you don't know what you don't know. So, That being said, please check out our Flight Mastery course. Go to DroneU.education. You can book a Flight Mastery course. Here, let me play DJI for a second, okay? You can book a training course at one of our eight training centers across the United States with really good experienced pilots, all brought to you by a great company. There you go. All right. I didn't know that was their deal. Yeah, I remember the whole their UTC Mm -hmm. thing. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, we we had yeah, never mind. Anyway, we would um, we would love to 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 fly with you. Yes, we would love to fly with you. Um, and there's no need to rant about things that we're not happy with because we are here to help people. So let's talk about what we should do. Let's say a helicopter flies below you. That's a different story, by the way, because under 14 USC 119 Section Charlie talks about minimum safe operating altitudes, and helicopters pretty much can operate anywhere as long as it's for a safe place to land. Really important point. Yeah, so what is the rule? I think this is a good place to start for the manned pilot, the manned aircraft in the situation that our caller In sparsely painted. populated areas, I believe they are supposed to be like 500 feet above uh, any subject or human or anything. No. Are those guidelines or are those laws? Those are regulations. Regulations, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Now, you can get an exemption for crop dusting to fly extremely low. Of course. So the chances are is that he could actually be well within his means um, to be flying that low. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, do you guys remember the Hawaii incident? Do you remember when a drone hit a helicopter in Hawaii? It was actually in Kauai. Uh, I am going to take you to this place that uh, this happened to, by the way. Uh, it's a very cool area, uh, Waimea Canyon. Anyway, uh, long story short is I actually asked Bill English, NTSB. I said, you know, drone pilot did nothing wrong. He's in class G airspace. He's flying line of sight. He, he's doing everything right yet the helicopter still hits him and he's supposed to be yielding to man- manned aircraft. He says, yeah, but the drone pilot was doing everything he should be doing. So I was like, well, is the drone pilot going to get in trouble? He's like, probably not. because He was doing everything he should be doing. So playing devil's advocate, um, which is hard to do given that I'm, we'll, we'll call it on the side of the drone pilot, but is that because the helicopter pilot came on him too fast or because as a, as a drone pilot, you're still supposed to be aware of your surroundings and manned aircraft, right? And get out of the way. So you are, but you're also limited by, by speed, which means if a helicopter comes in, which can be going in well of excess of 150 knots, let's say okay. a helicopter comes in, he can come in really fast, sure. much faster than you may have the ability to see and avoid. 
So I do not know the reasoning as to, I can't speak for Bill very long. I mean, I, of course, you know, I can't not do that. Of course. Um, but I would say that I think that there are operational limitations as a drone pilot that sometimes completely avoiding manned aircraft could be literally next to impossible. Um, and also, mm. if, you rem- if you remember the incident, I believe it was in Hollywood, Florida, where uh, it was like an R. F- it was that old, um, what's that old uh, Hawaii? Uh, show Tom Selleck. Um, oh, Magnum PI. Magnum PI. The old Magnum PI helicopter. I forget the name of it, and I gotta look it up now. Uh, the old Magnum PI helicopter. Uh, it's like it's very specific brand. There it is. Oh, it looks like the Magnum PI helicopter is now doing tours in Hawaii. Interesting. Hmm. So, anyway, um, the MD five hundred D helicopter. Interesting. Long and the short of it is, is that this helicopter literally flew right below the drone. Hmm. If the drone pilot would have tried to avoid and would have literally dropped an elevation to get out of the way of the helicopter, he could have actually caused more problems. So let's just say you're at 350 feet, which is well within the rules. Yep. And you see this helicopter coming at you, say it looks like it's a collision course, but you don't know if they're going to go, or let's just say they're lower than you. Let's say you're expecting them, or you're estimating they're at 250, 300, but you want to get out of the way. Do you go above 400 just to make sure everybody is safe and break the rules? This is a part I, one. I would. This is a part 107 test question. At what time is a drone pilot allowed to completely mm. ignore all FAA rules? Getting out of the way of a manned aircraft in the event of an emergency. Oh, okay. So an, an emergency could be beyond something to do with a manned aircraft. Yep. Huh. Well, then uh, now be careful this, to uh, what you define as emergency. <laughs> this could, now, but this also goes back to our very last show talking about the whole TOPS program and certification of instructors and all that. Because if this drone pilot was trained by Drone U, which he was, because you heard the question, what do we teach people? Thumbs up, Buttercup. Sure. So in that event, he would have been totally fine. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is actually, you know, you, you just brought a very good reason, a very good point on why we should not have um, altitude limits on our drones. Because even mm. though we're supposed to fly under 400 feet, if we have an altitude limit, there's no way that I'm going to be able to go into my menu, set my altitude limit to go higher to avoid a crash. In the event, yeah. So that's actually a really good reason as why all pilots should have full control of their drones without firmware upgrades and all that crap. So it's absolutely. for safety. Yeah, absolutely. And, and don't change that for a few bad apples, which is what our society tends to do. And what they did. Um, but anyway, that being said... Uh, in this particular case, because so what, what so Paul asking, was asking, what, do we do? what should we do? Yeah. He should do nothing because yeah. here's, here is the beauty of the regulations. As long as you are complying with the regulations, it's fine. Just let it be. Like yeah. literally let it be. I have to say that because there's really nothing you can do. Sure. You can call Fizzo. He's in, he's going to call the pilot. Pilot's going to get pissed off. Maybe they have a talk. Sure, do that. But at the end of the day, what's going to help you the most is just remembering to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Because let's say that that crop dusting pilot were to hit the drone, he were to die, and he were to be in a very severe accident. You'd be able to sleep at night because you were doing the right thing. If you weren't doing the right thing, if you busted through an altitude limit, if you flew in the wrong area, if you're flying egregiously, you'd have a heavy conscience. You'd also have absolutely zero insurance to cover your butt. Yeah, there'd be some significant liability there, obviously, but like you- How much liability do you think it would be? Millions, I I don't even know. I mean, because you could get into civil lawsuits at that point, and who knows? Can he file for bankruptcy and avoid those lawsuits? Well, I mean, so technically probably not, but you're not gonna get uh, blood from a turnip, right? Or what is the saying? Water oh, from a rock. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You have I mean, to be able to sue someone who has money. But at the same time, some people may be so passionate and, and pissed off, they may just sue you for suing sake. They very well may. We but do, the other thing you brought up... We do live in a litigious society, my friend. 
That's for sure. But the other point that you made is he may have been well within his rights. I mean, we know it was a crop duster plane, right? So yeah. he probably has he could all have, the... He could have completely been in the right, and we don't know, and that's just something you have to deal with. This is why the FAA says, see and avoid. Yeah, but the point is, Paul's group, they're fine. They did nothing wrong. They did nothing wrong. As far as we can tell, based and on... And if his... something would have happened, they still would be just fine. Yeah. That's that's why it's so important to just do the right thing. There are so many pilots in this industry that are like, I look, I'm all about safety. And then they do stupid all the time. And then they go on Facebook and be drone police to someone else. And it's like, no, you weren't being safe. Look, you could have huge problems. No, I have a huge problem with you. Do what you say. Anyway. I'm off my I'm off my uh, pedestal now. Right on. Well, I think we answered this question. I hope so. If not, as always, follow up questions are great, and uh, even encouraged. 100. percent That's gonna do it for us today. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. We really do. Please leave us a review. Please share the show. It helps us grow. Um, as you know, we are trying to get the best information out there. Also, just a quick recap: we do have four new classes coming to you. They are very technical. In addition, we are launching our enterprise uh, membership sometime this year. We're not sure when. We are trying to perfect it before we launch it to you. I am doing a webinar series. Uh, I'm doing one uh, that'll probably be too late by the time you hear this. I am doing another webinar. Uh, I believe it's in a couple weeks, so make sure that you follow uh, follow up on that. We are continuing to discuss, um, well, this won't be a continuation for this particular subject, but continuing to discuss enterprise issues. And one of those issues is what is truly the right package of equipment where you can do most drone jobs? Because we're seeing this huge, huge industry shift where people are moving away from these enterprise expensive birds, and they're going into consumer birds that can do the same thing for a much cheaper price even though they may have to change their workflow in some means, um, which makes sense. You know, people mm -hmm. are trying to create programs that make, uh, you know, workflow more efficient. It's supposed to save money. And when you're spending hundreds of thousand dollars on drones that only work half the time, that doesn't really help the drone industry. So we're going to be talking about which drones, and we're not going to be talking about just DJI. We're going to be talking about drones in general. Uh, I noticed a lot of people in the drone industry missed the whole DOD press release from last week, which very specifically laid out who they are working with for American-based drones and very enlightening information. If you didn't see that and you want to do some deep research and know what's really going on, check it out. Um, Last piece of news, and it'll be our sponsorship for next show, our third set of landing pads, the third run of landing pads just came in. Uh, as Even though Rob has been shipping them out the door just about as fast as they've been coming in, we do have, I think, like 10 to 15 sets left. We do it all around here. <laughs> let me, let me uh, clarify this, Rob. You do it all no, no, around no. here. No, 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 we no, no, no. We have a very, uh, yeah, anyways. It's a good team. Gets a lot done. We do, and we are going to be hiring again. Oh, and by the way, uh, help us welcome PJ Kirkpatrick to our new Drone U Elite um, program. So he was already a Drone U Elite instructor. He is now with Drone U on our executive team, and he will be taking on and managing outside training. So if you're looking to book a flight mastery training, the system is going to be changing a little bit for the better. Super, super excited for that. PJ is a phenomenal person. And a great pilot, a great uh, instructor. He's just a lot of great. So we're glad that he's joining us. He's one of the few people I really look up to. Yeah, he's, so. he's a good dude. Anyway, you guys rock. Thanks for again for listening to the show. My name is Paul. My name's Rob. You're listening to Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.